Welcome, fifth grade parents, we're gonna get started. So thanks for coming to join us tonight um, on in front of your computer. Um, we've been really thinking long and hard about how to help our parents, you all, to feel connected to your child's experience this year. And you know, we are so very thankful and appreciative that we've had your kids here every day, learning and living with us together. And at the same time, um, we've been a bit concerned about how to connect you all um, in a more direct way. Um, and so uh, because we are not hosting opportunities at the moment for parents to be on campus, um, we've tried to come up with ways to help you to feel more sort of secure about what your child is going to be experiencing this year. So one way to do that is to host these virtual sessions. And so here we are. And our goals for tonight are to help you to all feel a little more in the know about your child's fifth grade experience thus far and what's planned in the future. We have a team of folks from Carol here with you tonight to try to accomplish these goals. We have Glenn's Coleman here, our assistant lower school division head, to share with you a bigger picture view of how your child's day is organized and where we focus from a wide kind of high level perspective. We have our team leaders, uh, John, uh, AKA Mr. C and Abby, Miss Z here to share the ethos of the fifth grade experience. We have Megan Shea, one of our counselors here to share how we support children from a social emotional perspective. Um, we have our academic leadership with us tonight in language arts. We have Aaron Hawk and um, for math, we have Peter Morris. In for focus area and tutorial, we have Portia Pierre Mike. And for speech and language, we have Jen Kurzrock. And these folks will dig in a little bit more specifically into their particular areas of focus. So one takeaway that I'm really hopeful that you'll get from attending this evening is that there are a lot of eyes on your children. These folks who you're hearing from tonight are all actively aware of how your child is doing socially, emotionally, and academically in very discreet ways. They have indeed been planning way before your child even arrived in September, all summer long, culling through all of the admissions materials and, and your progress data that we've had um, for your for children who are returning this year. Um, so, your, so your homeroom teachers, as you know, um, and you've gotten to know a little bit more, um, are your first point of contact with any questions or comments or concerns, and they are supported by all of these people, supported in ways to problem solve, for resourcing, for training, and for gecking your children. So my big point here is that we have a large village of educators all with their eyes on your kids. And to speaking of your kids, I wanna share a little bit of news about from a whole school perspective. This year, we have 160 students in the lower school. And in the fifth grade, we have 63 students. And as a whole school, we are coming from um, a, a, a demographic of over 95 towns. Um, and typically, we share that that number has been around 75 historically. So that um, the, the catchment of towns that our families are coming from is widening and diversifying. Um, which we are happy to see. Um, it also indicates the real commitment that our families make for their children um, in finding the right school for them. And speaking of, of diversity, in addition to our steadfast commitment to serving your children with LBLD, a language-based learning disability, we remain very committed to our work in diversity, equity, and inclusion. And in that effort, we have ongoing trainings and DEI themed professional learning communities with our faculty that meet on Friday afternoons. We have now this year have dedicated DEI specialists at each grade level who are directly supporting this commitment. And this year, um, we also have the concept of perspective taking as a theme for all um, that we do as a community. So more to come on that um, in that area, um, but I wanted to be sure we emphasized all of those commitments. So overall, um, what have we been up to for the month of September and early October? Um, we have gotten to know your kids and they've really gotten to know um, their new school or their new grade. We've set routines, we've established school culture, we've been building connections kids to kids and adults to kids. We've done informal and formal assessments used as baselines and used in informing our instruction. So we have started to really dig into now the academic program and, um, and for fifth graders, homework is 
is really beginning um, full force. Um, and the slow start was all purposeful, intentional, to help to build a foundation of a good social emotional readiness for learning as we are now off to a really good start and are really dug, digging in. So in that transition um, in the fall that we make every year, you may be hearing from your kids things like, oh, it's really easy or I'm not learning anything new. Or you may recently be, be experiencing a shift in the position that your kids are taking. So from, I really love my new school or the fifth grade is really fun to I don't really like it so much anymore or they may be showing you some old avoidant or worry behaviors that you were hopeful that coming to Carol or staying at Carol may have gone away by now, but are now back. So we want you to know that these late range of feelings are all expected to us as we introduce new expectations of your children, but may be less expected of you. So please reach out to us um, if we can be helpful in any way in your child's sort of adjustment to the fifth grade and to the new school year. So let's get the program started. Uh, I wanted you to know, you've probably noticed that we're recording tonight so that um, you all can have the option of looking at this later. Um, and also for those who weren't able to join us um, can see, um, to, can take in the content. Um, and we ask that when questions come up to please post them in the Q&A feature here on Zoom. Um, and we will dedicate time at the end of the presentation to get your questions answered. Um, so next up, I'm gonna turn it over to our two team leaders, John and Abby, take it away. Hello, um, my name is Abby Zwetschgenbaum and um, soon you'll hear from John Crisitiello. Um, we are co-team leaders in the fifth grade and um, we're gonna introduce you to the team and then share a little bit about life in the fifth grade. And um, a fun fact about the two of us is that we actually both have 26 characters in our very long names. Uh, thank you, Abby. Um, yes, um, it's we. our names are quite a mouthful. That's why we are referenced sometimes as Mr. C and Ms. Z. Um, your students, though, know how to say the full names. Uh, welcome to Gatehouse. Gatehouse is a term that we have brought with us from the middle school campus where Carol all began. And we brought, uh, the fifth grade used to be in the Gatehouse building, which is the first building you come in on the right uh, to the middle school campus. And we moved, um, to the lower school, when Gatehouse came down to the lower school, they kept the name Gatehouse and uh, we use that to this day. So you'll hear that and that's a little bit of explanation of what that is. Next slide, please. So I'm gonna introduce the uh, grade five language teachers. Uh, again, with some more fun facts to um, make the evening flow a little bit better. So Abby Zwetschgenbaum is, um, our language teacher, she, one of her fun facts is that she bicycled from San Francisco to Los Angeles this past summer. Camille Casey, um, one fun fact about her is that she is one of four sisters. Valerie Nygren, Mrs. Nygren, she um, loves to ski and was once clocked um, at 63 miles per hour coming down the hill. Justine Hanready is a certified yoga teacher. Next slide, please. And this is our math team. A fun fact about John Crisitiello, Mr. C, is that he has actually sailed across the Atlantic Ocean three times in a small boat. Um, Deepti Sarohi, um, this is an awesome fun fact. She played ping pong at the national level in high school with other high schools all across India. Um, Ryan Walker has a one-year-old French bulldog named Bruce. Peter Morris used to live and teach in Munich, Germany. And then Patty Meldoon is um, our final math teacher in the fifth grade, and she is a tap dancer. Oop, next slide, thanks. Um, Kelly Sampar is a science teacher that half of the fifth graders see uh, the first part of the year, and then the other half will see next year. I mean, when the uh, semester switches over. Fun fact about her is that she actually works out a lot and she can deadlift two fifth graders. Okay, next slide, please. 
Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the community in Gatehouse. Um, we have a lot of opportunities throughout every day to spend time and build community with um, your children. At the, at the top of the slide, um, here are some of the times that we have together. Um, we have morning meeting. We eat snack and lunch as a homeroom. We have closing circles and advisory at the end of the day. And then twice a week, we have a period called quad up time where students um, get to do things as a whole grade or as a homeroom. And that's where we do um, some of the activities that I'll talk about. Um, in fifth grade, we have a real focus on empathy. Um, in ERIC, E stands for empathy, and our students think a lot about that. It's a pretty complex idea, and we, we challenge them to think about it throughout the day. Um, we also use the theme all-stars to ask students how they can be all-stars day to day. Um, we each homeroom made a shoe, which you can see on the top right, um, which is an all-star shoe, and made our own definitions of all-stars, and that's in all of our classes. We do a program each year called Think Give, where students are challenged to give um, acts of kindness to each other and think about kindness in um, a more serious way. Um, we're also using advisory for situational intelligence work. So that's aiming at some more social emotional learning, executive functioning um, skills like reading the room, which we thought was a great um, thing to implement into class, especially after a year of remote learning. Um, quad up time is also when we do a lot of the social justice work that is so important to Carol. Uh, we started the year off by each making um, uh, heritage flags where students talked about the origin of their names with their families and then shared it. And they're in all of our classes, um, which I think is a love, lovely symbol in our classrooms. Um, John will do the next slide. I'm just going to review some of the gatehouse traditions that we have um, topping the list is birdhouse building. For over 25 years, students in the fifth grade at Carroll have built birdhouses for Eastern bluebirds and sold them um, for fundraising for a traditional trip to Cape Cod, an overnight trip. But since the pandemic, we'd have to we had to shift gears and we actually did we did make them and sell them in the last two years. And uh, we used the money to um, give to a charities that the students identified. And last year we, we gave over $2,000 to those charities. And we plan to do the same this year. Uh, we also have um, a winter celebration where in the past we cooked breakfast for the entire um, lower school, including teachers and all, all the students. And so we are looking at a way to do that differently this year because of uh, the, our situation. And hopefully um, it will be carrying on some part of that, that tradition. What's a relatively new tradition in Gatehouse is the turtles, the Blandings turtles. Um, you may have heard about them already. Uh, this is a conservation project that we've teamed up with locally. Um, these turtles were found in the Great Meadows Swamp area of Concord and as babies. Um, and this is a Head Start program that lets them uh, grow in um, a controlled environment away from predators and other unsafe things. And then they were released back into Great Meadows in the spring. And we've been doing it for, this is I think the third year now. And the students participate a lot in their naming, they come to classes to visit on a regular basis. The students feed them and weigh them and measure them. It's a great project. Um, very soon coming is the Halloween fashion show. It's right around the corner. Um, we're celebrating that next Wednesday. If your child feels up to it, they can come in a costume, bring a costume to school. In the last period of Wednesday, we do a little fashion show. They walk the runway, we take a picture, they make a pose. And um, it's a lot of fun, um, uh, a fun way to celebrate the day. And the last, uh, Big tradition is step up day, where um, since fifth graders are the last, the oldest grade at the lower school, they're off on off. We say goodbye to them on their way to the middle school. They have we have a ceremony where they um, reflect on have a chance to reflect on the year and their learning. And uh, you are invited to that. And it's a wonderful way to say goodbye to our, our fifth grade. Next slide, please. Hey, you may have heard the big news in the fifth grade halls that there's officially homework. Um, we've rolled out language homework this week and starting next week, um, math homework will also be assigned. Homework um, for students should take 
about 40 to 60 minutes, um, no more. Homework is independent work. Um, students should never come home feeling like they have to learn something new for homework. It's re a review. Um, and it's really important that they do that work independently so um, teachers can know what they can do outside of school. Um, students are bringing Chromebooks back and forth um, from school to home. And part of that is um, soon Chromebook, they will have some Chromebook work um, for homework on their Chromebooks. And charging is actually, charging your Chromebook is part of the homework assignment. So the expectation is students come to school with a charged Chromebook um, and headphones. If everybody could please send their child to school with headphones, that is um, something else they need every day. Um, if a student misses an assignment, um, on the right of the slide is our very um, colorful homework um, homework tracker chart that they'll get a new one each week. On the back, there's an explanation of what to do if a student misses a homework assignment. And this is modeled after what they'll um, see in the middle school as well. So that should feel like a pretty smooth transition to homework. Um, and finally, um, if you're noticing your child has any um, is having issues with homework, is having trouble completing it, please feel free to email um, their teacher, their homeroom teacher. We're always here to help support them and want to make sure that they're feeling comfortable um, doing their homework. Or in general, if there's any communication, you should feel free to always email us. We're here for you and for your students. Um, for your children. Um, and that is our last slide. So I'm going to pass it over to our counselor, Meg Shea. And a fun fact about Meg is that she is the number five of six kids. It is true. It is true. Thank you, Abby. Good evening, everyone. I'm happy to be here with you tonight. Um, my name is Megan Shea, and I'm one of the counselors here in the lower school, along with Mealy Perilla. I work primarily with the fifth grade and um, feel really lucky I'm on their hallway. So the kids pass me multiple times a day. Um, here at, at the lower school, the counselors really we think of our roles as both building connection and community, as well as supporting social, emotional health and growth. And as you heard from Abby and John, the, the fifth grade does a, a lot to really help build their fifth grade community. Um, and we just sort of support that, um, their efforts, um, supporting their responsive classroom. As they mentioned, all the kids start the morning in morning meeting as, and end the day in a closing circle, which is part of our, our responsive classroom work together. Um, we reinforce our ERIC core values of empathy, respect, inclusion, and kindness. And again, fifth grade spends a lot of time really thinking about empathy um, and doing great work, trying to, to really put each other, um, get a different perspective taking, which is really awesome. Um, we do some helping hands. We run our helping hands community service club, which um, had our first meeting last week. We had a ton of kids come in, which was awesome. And we do both community service at the lower school itself. And then um, ultimately we'll be doing some projects that help our community at large um, outside of our school. We are part of our today's hoorays um, um, community uh what do I want to say? The talent show. We have a talent show roughly once a month and we help to organize that and get the kids engaged in that. Um, a fun fact, the kids I have just heard, but the first talent show will be um, next Friday. So October 22nd. And we're asking people to do a little video of their kids outside of school showing a talent. And then we uh, submit it to either myself or Maylee. And uh, we put a slide deck together for the kids to see each other's talents, which is a really special way to get to know each other other. Um, we're also here to support your child's social, emotional um, health and growth. And that involves a lot of um, working with teachers, working with you all, um, informal check-ins with, with students. We are, we are pretty present in the building. And, um, you know, I, I see a lot of you at dismissal. <laughs> um, and arrival. So um, the kids see us at recess, they see it in the us on the hallways and in classrooms. And so they're used to seeing us around, which is helpful as well. Um, but really, if there's anything going on that you have a concern about your kid, I, I really encourage you to reach out to either your homeroom teacher or myself and, and let us know how um, what's going on so that we can, you know, um, do our best to help support your child here at school. We do have snack and lunch groups. We work with, again, with parents, with teachers and with um, 
um, collateral support. So if a student is seeing a therapist outside of school, then we'd like to, to reach out to them as well to make sure we're all using the same language. It really helps to support the kid in a better way. So any questions or any um, concerns you have, please reach out. Know that we are just another part of, of the team looking out for your kids. Um, and now I will pass it on to Glenn's Coleman. Thanks, Meg. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's so great to uh, see that we have over 50 particip participants tonight. Um, my job is to talk to you all broadly about our academic program. So um, when I think of our academic program, I like to think of it in three different components. Uh, you can move the slide, please. Um, we have uh, sort of committed to a part of our day as dealing with structured learning and remediation, a part of our day in dealing with cognitive capacities and um, thinking skills and executive functioning skills. And then a part of our day as fostering the strengths that we know so many of our, our students have. So what I'd like to show you is um, sort of where that falls in their schedule. What you see here is a, um, a typical schedule of a fifth grader. Um, the parts that are in pink are the parts that uh, would be considered um, connecting into the structured learning and remediation portion of our days. So that would include uh, a language class, a focus area class, which is generally a tutorial, a math class, and a flex box. And students have each one of these every day uh, of the week and flex block being Monday through Thursday. So what I wanna tell you a little bit about flex block and if you can go to the next, um, the next slide is a flex block in fifth grade is composed of two portions. Um, for half of the year, the students are in what we call an academic flex. And the academic flex is really a double dose of something we've determined that the child needs a little more time to work on. It may be writing, it may be reading fluency, it may be uh, a little bit more in the foundational skills of reading. So we work together as a team to sort of, uh, you know, look at data, look at the student and make a determination for what that flex block should be. When they are not in academic flex, they are in a, something called targeted cognitive intervention. Um, so many of you may have heard of this. It is a program that we have at Carroll that is started in grade four and um, goes all the way through grade nine. So students uh, have a targeted cognitive intervention period every year. And it is a time where kids can work very directly on underlying weaknesses that they may have in their cognitive profiles. So the programs include um, reaction time, working on some reaction time activities, working on some working memory activities, working on um, executive functioning and really targeting those skills and building those capacities so that children um, become more efficient learners and are ready for to take on more academic challenges. So that, um, that falls in our flex block and clearly also falls under our time when we do some work on cognitive capacities. Um, the other thing, the reason why there is so much green here is that executive functioning is such a prevalent issue for so many of our students that we really work on this all day, every day. It is part of our instruction. It's part of the way we approach teaching. Um, and if you look at those two periods of the day that Abby uh, alluded to, the advisory period in the morning and the NCLU period in the afternoon, which stands for No Child Left Unorganized, those are specific times of the day sort of to sandwich what's in the middle to work on specific skills that um, children need to build in order to be successful learners, organization, um, task planning. And uh, as Abby mentioned before, we're also really focused on situational intelligence and understanding how to respond in different situations throughout the day. So those um, periods of the day are specifically targeted for building these cognitive capacities and executive functioning. And then our instruction kind of carries us through for the rest of um, the rest of the day. So we can go to the next. Um, 
slide. And this is equally as important as working on remediation. Um, we feel that as we focus on the whole child, fostering their strengths and embracing their individualities is really um, also a crucial part of their day. So um, what you see here in blue are different parts of the day where children uh, engage in their morning meeting times where they are working on community building and um, you know, coming together as a group and sharing their interests. They have uh, a team time twice a week. In fifth grade, we call it quad up time. Abby talked a little bit about the kinds of things that happen during quad up time, but a lot of work is done in the diversity, equity, and inclusion realm, as well as our social emotional curriculum, um, which includes responsive classroom. And then the other two areas that really focus on these strengths are um, our multis. Uh, and you're going to see a video from our multis at the end of this presentation where um, they'll introduce themselves and talk about the different domains that we sort of focus on in, in uh, our multi-time. But also every other Friday, students have what we call an enrichment time in their um, schedules where they get to participate in something special, almost club-like uh, for the day. It could be um, working in the art realm on cardboard construction or working in fun fitness down in the gym or doing some cool things with the music uh, teachers. So every other Friday, children are assigned to one of those um, selections and have an opportunity to really explore those interests. So, um, you know, in, in on the whole, you know, those are the three major components of our day. What I'd like to do now is turn this over to our department heads who will speak a little bit more specifically about um, their different domains. So uh, I'd like to introduce to you Iram Huck, who is our lower school language department head. Thank you, Glens. Good evening, everyone. I'm Iram Huck. I'm head of language in the lower school. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, so as language head, one of my responsibilities is to group our fifth graders into their language classes. Uh, these groupings are done on the basis of a very comprehensive analysis of our students' cognitive learning profile as well as their academic skills, uh, primarily reading. Uh, so we have uh, eight language classes in fifth grade and uh, each class, uh, the instructional pace is designed to meet the needs of its students. So the pace can vary from class to class. Language instruction across the board is highly multi-sensory, uh, activating multiple uh, modalities because that's how we know our students learn best. So fifth grade is the senior most class uh, um, grade in the lower school. And um, it's, um, it's called the gatehouse, but at the same time, it's also the gateway to middle school. So a language program in fifth grade is designed to build upon the fourth grade experience at the same time to respond to, uh, to bridge to the expectations of the sixth grade as well. So what I've done on this slide is I've broken down the language program into five, five main domains. The first one is oral language. And uh, we maintain our focus on oral language in fifth grade because it is not only important for oral communication, effective communication skills, but at the same time, it, has, it is so interconnected with how our students write. So that's one of the you know, big reasons why oral language is such a huge area of focus throughout lower school. Um, students use systems like expanding expressions uh, to organize their thinking, and uh, it supports the executive function of the language in terms of organizing our thoughts and also uh, supports retrieval, which is also an area of need for most of our students. So the second domain is vocabulary, which is also explicitly and directly taught in fifth grade. Um, the two images that you see uh, on the slide um, are pages out of the, you know, one of students' workbooks. And our approach to vocabulary instruction is 
uh, a very much a word structure analysis approach. So we encourage our students to, uh, at a basic level, take words apart, the vocabulary words on the basis of sounds, uh, which are the phonemes, or concepts that they're learning in tutoring or at a more advanced level where students are breaking down vocabulary words into meaningful word parts, which are morphemes. So it's a, it's a very structural uh, word structure analysis approach that we want our students to build that lens as they progress and learn higher level vocabulary. Students uh, beyond tutorial are also practicing their reading fluency in the language class. They use their decoding skills and their sight word vocabulary that they're building and tutoring, but they read um, in uh, language classes um, with good fluency, with good rate, with accuracy and prosody, which is really the rhythm of the language. It's the intonation and the expression with, with which students read. So that's part, a huge focus in the language classes as well. And as they read uh, engaging literature books, there is a direct and explicit instruction on decoding figurative language, because now we are getting into more complex plots and stories, and therefore uh, the language is more complex in which you have all kinds of figurative language coming into the play. They are also explicitly, explicitly taught higher order thinking skills such as making inferences or reading between the lines because our goal is for our fifth graders to be able to participate in what's called a literature circle uh, within their language classes. So that's our long-term goal uh, and all the thinking skills that go into it are being directly taught. Students build upon the story form puzzle chart that they work on in fourth grade. And now as the stories are more complex, uh, they transition to a more complex chart that you can see in the slide and it's called a plot chart. For writing, uh, handwriting continues to be a focus in fifth grade. Um, cursive fluency is a big focus. Uh, again, um, handwriting is not just working on the mechanics uh, of handwriting, uh, but it is also simultaneously reinforcing phonemic awareness, decoding, and spelling. So that remains a huge focus uh, alongside with keyboarding, which is again, um, you know, something to prepare our students for. Their, their keyboarding fluency is also worked upon in fifth grade, so they are more ready for sixth next year. For grammar and for sentence structure, we're using Framing Your Thoughts. It's a highly multi-sensory and a logic-based grammar um, instruction system. Students have been working on that since in fourth grade, but then we also bring our new stu students into the fold and they work on grammar and sentence structure using this program. For paragraph writing, our goal in fifth grade is to secure an eight sentence paragraph, uh, which has a solid, well-developed topic sentence, three details, but then each detail has an expansion detail connected to it. So, and with a concluding sentence. So this eight sentence paragraph foundation lends itself really well to the multi-paragraph writing students would be expected to work on in sixth grade. But this is the foundation for um, making that transition seamless. So that's gonna be our focus for paragraph writing. They'll do multiple different types of paragraph. Uh, writing in a language class. But then again, back to the flex block where based on student needs, based on what we need to double dose on, it could very well be reading fluency, it could be writing, it could be oral language, but that's where we have another opportunity to meet our students' needs uh, even better. So homework was already covered by Abby, uh, so she covered all the bases. The only thing I will uh, sort of go over one more time is the outside reading. And um, we are highly deeply cognizant of the variation in the reading skills of our students within a grade. And so our commitment is to make the expectation appropriate for all reading skill levels. Uh, 15 minutes of outside reading could be silent reading for some students. It could be read aloud for others. And it could be that there is a combination of maybe a parent reading to the student and they 
shoulder part of the responsibility. So it will really be a communication between the language teacher and the student and the tutors will support with providing, especially for our low skill readers, um, material that we can send home to support this outside reading, which I think is one of the most critical pieces of homework from the language classes. The last thing I wanted to touch upon today is assessment for our fifth grade. Um, there are two main goals for assessment across the board for lower school students, and it's the same for fifth graders. The first goal is to see how our fifth graders are responding to the language curriculum they are being taught. So their response, their progress, and tracking that uh, with curriculum-based assessments three times a year um, is really one track that we want to keep a check on and continue to see the trend line on that. The second goal is to see the gap between where our fifth graders are and where they need to be, comparing them to students, fifth graders nationwide. And we have standardized assessments for those uh, skills. And th those are also done three times a year. So that's a very broad overview of uh, the fifth grade language program. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Jen Kersrock, who is the speech and language pathologist at Lohr School. Thanks, Aram. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jen Kurzak. I am the speech and language pathologist for um, the lower school. So I work with first through fifth graders. Um, and I just want to say I'm going to give kind of a brief overview of the many different ways that speech and language support can look at the lower school, but it can look very different for any child. So I work collaboratively with administration, with department heads, with um, the teaching team to sort of figure out where in this model, if at all, um, your child could fit and benefit and we'll sort of go from there. So this doesn't necessarily mean this is what every child receives, but this is sort of what is possible within our model. Um, so there are sort of two overarching um, components, which are direct support and then consultation. Direct support can look like support for expressive and receptive oral language, executive function skills, and social pragmatic skills. And that can look a couple of different ways. Most commonly, that can look like push-in support in a child's academic classes. So I might have a regularly scheduled class time with, say, um, Abby's Wetchkin Mom's language class where I join with her and either we're doing what she planned for the lesson and I'm helping to adapt for individual students or we might co-plan a lesson um, or work in small groups, sort of whatever makes sense. Um, it may be whole class lessons that on occasion, if there's an entire class that could benefit from some more targeted support for a speech and language issue, I might work with the teacher to co-plan a lesson about it. Um, sometimes that may look like lunch groups or snack groups. And then occasionally that may look like a small um, group that might work on some more speech and language, um, oral language skills in a flex block, as Glenn's mentioned. And then another big portion of my job is consultation, and that sort of has three prongs. One is ongoing back and forth communi or communication and consultation with um, teachers and tutors, sort of a child's entire teaching team to make sure I know what they're seeing and that I'm um, helping to sort of guide supports that may be helpful. Another big piece is for students who are working with an outside speech and language pathologist, I consult with them regularly to make sure they know what we're seeing in the classroom and that we know what they're working on so we can help generalize it to the classroom. And then I'm always here um, to consult with parents about anything you're noticing at home, things that we're noticing in school or sort of breaking down components of a profile. And then as um, Iram alluded to, one thing that all of our students um, receive is oral language support that's directly embedded into our curriculum in our language classes and in our flex blocks. So students receive things like visualizing and verbalizing, framing your thoughts, expanding expression tools, directly in their language class so that we can sort of go from there if students then need something more specialized. Um, and that is sort of a broad overview of the many different ways speech and language can look at the lower school. Like I mentioned, I am always here. Um, if you have questions, I put my email on there um, and I've really enjoyed getting to meet your students over the last couple of weeks. And with that, I am going to pass it off to Portia Pierre-Mike who is our head of tutoring at the lower school. Thank you, Jen. Good evening, everyone. My name is Portia Pierre-Mike and I am the lower school tutoring department head. Since the start of the school year, your child's tutor has begun the process of learning about your child and connecting with members of their learning team. 
Over the past four weeks in tu tutorial, your child's tutor has been working and learning about your child using a holistic approach as the process of discovering your child's strengths and hobbies and areas of, cha of challenge begin. If your child is new to our community or continues if your child is returning. The heart of an OG lesson is to provide diagnostic and prescriptive lessons. The goal is to have students understand the structures of the English language. OG concepts unfold the logic within the language. The beauty of a diagnostic and prescriptive lesson is that it meets each student directly on their path to a larger understanding in the areas of reading and spelling. Instruction is structured, sequential, and systematic showcasing the predictable relationships between written letters and spoken sounds. So moving from simple to complex. So for example, learning a variety of syllable patterns, common prefixes, suffixes, and Latin and Greek word parts. Concepts are taught through a multi-sensory approach and are reinforced until mastery. OG skills are reinforced so that students can apply them to connected text with greater automaticity. So ensuring that students are seeing what they are learning, they are listening to what they are learning, they have an opportunity to touch the things that they are engaging with, but all, and also move within their environments to increase their ability, their automaticity with the content. The relationship between tutor and tutee or their tutees is rooted in trust. Confidence is built from experience success and constructive feedback is normalized over time. Assessments, your, child, your child's tutor will administer two assessments three times a year. The first assessment, which is happening right now, is our curriculum-based assessment, also known as CBAs. Our CBAs assess your child's response to our OG curriculum. The second assessment is read, read naturally, which is nationally normed, which is our nationally normed reading fluency assessment. In a few weeks, you will meet your child's tutor in addition to members of their learning team at your second conference. During this time, you'll receive information in greater detail along with tutoring goals for your child. And at this time, I would like to introduce you all to our math department head, Peter Morris. Thank you. Thank you, Portia. Hi all, I am Peter Morris and I'm the head of math in the lower school. Um, and despite you know the fact that my picture takes up half this slide, it is dedicated to fifth grade math. And so I'm gonna give you a more of an overview of, of what um, the math experience is like in grade five. So at Carroll, our goal is to foster students views of themselves as young mathematicians and to provide opportunities for students to develop their math reasoning. In doing so, we place an emphasis on flexibility and deep thinking about problems ahead of putting the focus on speed and memorization. We start each year, as has already happened in fifth grade classrooms, by defining what math is and what it means to be a mathematician. A common misperception is that math is simply about getting right answers and getting them quickly, but doing math as mathematicians do involves visualization and exploration creativity and play. And the most interesting and important problems in math involve making mistakes and then making connections by thinking deeply over longer periods of time. We have dedicated math teachers for fifth grade. There are five math teachers who you met, well, you met their pictures earlier. Um, five math teachers in fifth grade and these five math teachers teach 12 math classes which have been created from the eight home rooms. Having 12 math classes means smaller math classes, and this affords us more flexibility to give each child the level of challenge they need within groups of learners who have varied math perspectives. As for homework, um, Abby touched on this earlier, but expect your child to begin getting math homework um, by next week once language homework routines have been established. Math homework will mostly be a review of previously covered content. Our goal on homework is not necessarily 100% completion. Rather, it really should provide an opportunity for about 15 to 20 minutes of practice and problem solving for your child to complete independently. And as Abby said, if ever there's a case where your child experiences um, struggle with their homework that's beyond uh, what's productive, um, and that will happen from time to time, 
have them set it aside, send an email to both the homeroom teacher and the math teacher um, to make them aware of, of what your child was experiencing on homework. And uh, then we can address it in school and adjust the homework accordingly. From a curriculum standpoint, we use illustrative mathematics as a guiding resource, and it has many elements that we like, but even the best curriculum is made better for our students with certain modifications. We draw from multiple resources in designing learning experiences for your kids, and our teachers work very hard and are very skilled in taking resource materials and either modifying them or completely rebuilding them from scratch where necessary to make tasks more accessible and engaging for our students. Accordingly, you will notice many teacher modified or teacher created materials when you see your child's classwork or homework. Alrighty, that's just a, a brief overview of what math looks like in fifth grade. Uh, now I'm gonna send it back to Glenn's Coleman who will share an introductory video produced by our Dynamic Multis team. Thanks, Peter. And thank you to all the department heads for giving us um, such great information about our academic program. So as promised, we would like to introduce you to our multi-team. They are amazing, an amazing group of people who do fabulous things all day long with your children. So we will start this video. Um, and upon completion of the video, we will begin our question and answer period with Sue King. And thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Patrick Pate. I am the lower school music teacher here at Carroll. It's my 12th year doing that. And it's my first year as the lower school Maltese team leader. And for newer parents, Maltese is a word at Carroll that means specialist, you know, PE, arts, and all the other subjects outside of the core academic subjects. Um, in music class this year, the most exciting thing is we're back in the classroom. Last year, we were either meeting online or outside, which is very challenging uh, for instruments like guitar and ukulele. So we're back in the music classroom, which means all the students get to experience the percussion instruments I have from all over the world. Those are great springboards into discussions about culture and identity. We um, also focus a lot on recorder in fourth grade, and our instrument of the year in fifth grade is ukulele. But all students uh, experience movement, singing, and instrument playing as part of the core curriculum in music. Um, I'm very excited to have all of you get to know a little bit about our other Maltese teachers. So let's continue this presentation. Thanks, guys. Look forward to being your kid's music teacher. Hi, my name is Ms. Sifter. You will find me here in the art room. Um, here we are building skills for self-expression. We also are exercising our fine motor skills uh, with all sorts of different materials, uh, including clay. Every year people get a good, healthy clay unit. Um, there are opportunities for problem solving every time kids step into the art room. We research for our projects. We do pre-planning. We do building. We do revising. We do rebuilding. Um, and it's a great opportunity. And those, those steps mimic writing, don't they? Wow. Also, we explore our world uh, through looking at art. And that helps us to begin to uh, develop an understanding for context of who we are and where we are in time and history and place on this world and how are the many ways that I could possibly decide to express myself. That's what we're here doing in art and we're having a good time. Take care. Hey everybody, Coach Hendrick here uh, on our beautiful turf field. Really excited to have your kids again this year. Welcome to those that are uh, new to Carol. Welcome back to those returning. Really excited about playing outside, inside. We have more options this year. I want to introduce Coach B to you, Coach. Hi everybody. Uh, 
Coach B here. I'll be helping out Coach pretty much on our turf in our, uh, in our gym with PE. You'll also see me pretty much anywhere anywhere else in the school. I might be with Mr. Payton one day, Miss Sifter the next. So I look forward to seeing you and all the lessons we got planned. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mr. Gregory. I teach Bounders here at the lower school. Uh, our Bounders program is based off of the Outward Bound program brought to us by a former teacher uh, back in the beginning at Carroll School. Bounders has been a staple and it's been around almost as long as Orton Gillingham. Here, we bring out the confidence in your child. We find their strengths. We encourage them to go past their edges and to be a little uncomfortable. We challenge them to work in groups and to explore the natural world. In Bounders, students can learn everything from camping skills that can involve setting up a tent, starting a fire, how to safely handle a knife and create something usable with it. Students will also get the experience of taking a risk it might be having other classmates keep them safe when they're off the ground, riding a giant A-frame, or maybe spotting each other when they're up on a slack line. Students will also have the opportunity to have a little time by themselves, connecting with nature and observing their own curiosities. Founders, I like to tell the students, is a break from the academics, but I teach them through play and they never see it coming. Hello, I'm Eric Jacobson, and I teach Makers. And I'm Jamie Fisher, also teaching Makers. I am super excited to get to do some 3D design and some very cool 3D printing. I agree, Eric. And I think the thing that I'm probably most looking forward to this year is seeing kids really learn how to code using both Scratch and Spiros. It should be a really fun year. Hi, my name is Kelly Sampar, and I am primarily the fifth grade science teacher at the lower school. I also teach a fourth grade class, um, and I'm an OG tutor. Um, this year, I'm really pumped about partnering with Grassroots Wildlife Conservation to help head start um, some adorable but threatened um, Blandine's turtles. Um, so we work with them to gather growth data. So the kids use food scales and calipers, just like real scientists do to gather information and data about the growth rates of these little hatchlings that we spend the year um, feeding and taking care of so that when we return them to um, their homes at Concord's Great Meadows in the spring, they are bigger and stronger and they have a better chance at survival. So in fifth grade this year, pumped because these adorable little guys have a better chance because of our fifth graders. Um, so they're really helping our local ecosystem, which Honestly, can't ask for anything better than that. So we're excited. Thank you. Bye. How's it going? My name is Kieran McCubrey. This is my seventh year at the Carroll School, but my first year working as a science teacher for the first through fourth grades. Uh, science has always been something that I've been super interested in. So I'm just excited to be teaching something that I'm really, really passionate about. Uh, I'm looking forward to this upcoming year. So that was great. Um, so now we are at the part of our evening where we would be uh, interested in answering any of your questions. So if you um, have a question, please use the Q&A function and we will um, try to respond as quickly as possible. Thanks, Glenn. Gonna pick up a few questions. Um, I'm Stacy Daniels. Welcome to you all. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. Sorry about the video, a little misaligned from the from the mouths, but I hope you got the, the general gist of it. Um, Glenn's or Sue or Iram, I'm just wondering if you could clarify the 15 minutes of reading per night. Um, is it okay to alternate reading paragraphs and so forth, or 
just the parent read or just the child read, just a little more clarity there would be great. Yeah, I'm happy to take that, uh, Stacy. Can you hear me? Perfectly. Awesome. So like I said, uh, when I was presenting that, yes, absolutely, we are super aware of the uh, you know, the variation between the skill level of reading in fifth grade, as is true for all our lower school grades. So we meet our students where they are, and that is our approach towards the outside reading as well. So any combination of, you know, like it, it will be a direct communication between the language teacher and the student, individual students, uh, as to how they're going to handle this outside reading. Uh, for some students, it might be that they're reading on their own and reading out loud. For other students, it may be appropriate right now to sort of share that responsibility to be read to part, part of the time and to read the rest of it. And even the material, like I said, we do need uh, our partnership with the tutors who know our students' reading levels so well that um, you know we will support families and our students with the material that they need for this outside reading. Because totally aware of the fact that uh, when material that is at low decoding level is not as engaging and motivating, so finding that balance of high motivation and low decoding skills, so they're pract practicing their fluency is really important to us. So we will support all our fifth graders uh, exactly where they are. So it could be a combination of different uh, you know, ways of handling this. It's not the same expectation for each student. Uh, also, I just want to take an opportunity and ap apologize for the typos in the slide. I did fix them. So to the parent who sent that, thank you. Editing and revising is an important skill which I should practice more. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Iram. Um, just a quick clarification. There was a question about the Halloween fashion show. So John and Abby, let me know that it will be on the 27th of October during the very last block of the day. And what students can do is bring their Halloween costumes in, which will be stored in their locker and then can be brought out for the very last block of the day. Um, we also had a question around what will, ho will homework assignments, all homework assignments be available for parents to see? Um, I think this parent has a question on making sure the child is really clear on the assignment and so forth. Um, I can put that out to Abby or John. Um, I can take it. So um, the homework assignments are all going to be written down on the homework tracker or the homework chart that I presented. So parents can look there. Um, I know for some language uh, homework, it'll also be on their Chromebooks. So I think teachers um, or sorry, parents should be able to access it and if they have a specific question, they can email their students, their child's homeroom teacher, and we can help you see it. But I would say the homework tracker um, chart and um, their Chromebook on Google Classroom should have all that. Thanks, Abby. Um, we have a question here about targeted cognitive intervention activities and whether there are any that could be done at home with a child. And so Glenn's or Sue, I'll just throw that out to one of you. Uh, sure, I'll take it. Um, so the TCI programs are um, highly individualized in terms of what each child needs. What we do at the beginning uh, of each session, actually for fifth graders, it's three times a year, is we do some uh, use some standardized forms and we assess them. And then we use that data along with a lot of their diagnostics that we have in our uh, database and we make a recommendation for which particular intervention they go into. And um, one of the most powerful parts of the program is the coaching that goes along with it. So in terms of your question about whether you could do it at home, there are definitely programs that um, are similar to what we do, such as Lumosity. Um, but the coaching part is, is sort of, uh, it is sort of the, the backbones of the program. So what I would recommend is if you have um, specific interests or concerns about your child and um, doing some of this work at home, you contact me and we can have a one-to-one -one conversation and um, sort of figure it out together. Thanks, Glenn. 
Um, another question for either you or John or Abby, is there geography, history, or social studies work? I can take that too. Um, so we are really focused on the core subjects in our, um, in our schedule where we have integrated a lot of the history or social studies content would be within that quad up time. So um, last year, we really uh, shifted focus in terms of our history curriculum and went more towards um, the social justice themes. And we have uh, continued that work and have integrated it into the quad up times. Abby, who is the team leader, also happens to be the what we call DEI coordinator for her grade, the DEC, uh, diversity, equity, inclusion and, um, coordinator for her grade. And this is a group of um, a large group of uh, team people from each grade, along with our director, Osa Osagi, um, who work on developing curriculum specifically for these quad up teams. So that is really where you're going to see the history curriculum um, integrated into the program. Thanks, Glenns. Um, and just quickly, I have a, just a small curriculum question. Regarding science, do all fifth graders get to work with turtles? Me again. Um, so yes, the answer is yes. Um, so the science curriculum is a half year curriculum where uh, students either have it the first half of the year or the second half of the year. However, the turtles are a year long curriculum and um, all homerooms play a part in the caretaking of the turtles. Uh, we were just in a meeting today where the, the teachers were kind of all signing up for which day the turtles, um, their class would be responsible for, for taking care of the turtles. So the turtles are, um, are something that the kids participate in all year. They've all been a part of the naming of, of the turtles, which was a, quite an event. And, um, and they will sort of see them through to the end of the year where we will have a big ceremony, um, school-wide ceremony at the end of the year where they will um, be released back into their homeland. So yes, fifth graders will follow them all through the year. Thanks, Glenn. Um, a parent had a question about Bounders, which I can answer. Bounders is part of the regular curriculum um, for all students at the lower school, um, in addition to being offered as an after school add on as well. Um, Sue, I had a couple questions for you, one of which was about the Cape Cod trip um, and whether that was canceled. Another was about Will there be more opportunity for kids to mix with other students in other fifth grade classroom as the year progresses, assuming fewer COVID obstacles? Thanks, Stacey. Um, the Cape Cod um, trip um, that's been sort of a longstanding tradition in the fifth grade has, has to, had to be reimagined. Um, uh, obviously, last year it wasn't a possibility. Um, sadly enough, Cape Cod Sea Camps, which is the destination that we would head to, has been sold. Um, and is no longer um, a camp receiving student groups. So we have a lot of reimagining to do. I don't know at this point whether we would anticipate having any kind of an overnight trip this coming school year, but we have time to kind of ponder that and think that through. Um, do know that we're very interested in bringing back some of the fifth grade traditions, and we just need to have a sort of green light from a health and safety perspective, and we'll go to task to try to figure out how we can build um, those traditions back in. Um, and as it relates to having opportunities to be able to socialize with kids um, throughout the fifth grade, uh, do know that we really do not have any current health and safety restrictions for kids to be able to be together as a full fifth grade at this point. They are all outside together at recess. Um, during last year's program, there were separated sort of domains in the outside play area for different pods. We now no longer are having pods for kids um, outside at recess. Uh, so there are opportunities for kids to be able to um, connect with other kids from other classrooms. We also have paired 
morning meetings um, that change throughout the year. So some of that will can happen um, as well, where we just intentionally try to give opportunity for kids to have time with other children. Um, our spe we have a special event on Friday, Fall Festival in the lower school, which the excitement is building, as you can imagine, um, in the in the building, and um, and our and kids are mixed up in different by different homerooms and whatnot for those groups as well. So we try to look at many opportunities to be able to provide that that um, sort of mingling of children from a social perspective. Um, and then can you talk about, I'm going to ask you a couple more questions and then I'm going to stop the questions for the night so we can let everybody go on with their, with their evening. Um, the question is what happens during fifth grade recess right now? Um, and the other question kind of related is what do we do to support students as they transition to the middle school? So recess. So we have our fifth graders are all out together um, in, with the destination of that large field in the back where the yurt is. So there are different zones of play that the kids can participate in. So there's a basketball hoop where we have kids playing a little knockout. Um, there are some soccer nets where the kids are playing a game of soccer. There are four square courts where the kids are able to play four square. There's a football game um, that's always um, um, going on um, as well. Uh, we've got kids making friendship bracelets, I noticed this week um, out there. So there's a real variety of options and we try to mix that up and talk to kids and find out what they want to do and games that they're interested in. Kids change their interests and focus and um, just like everything, we try to um, bring some variety uh, to the gameplay and opportunities. We've got to try to keep them busy. Fifth graders like to kind of huddle and chat. And so there's a fair amount of that that happens as well. And as we are trying to keep them active, there are about six adults out there at every recess. So there's a lot of opportunity for adult facilitation of games and, and support of trying to get kids moving and, and the like. Um, and what was the other question today? Sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. So the final question for the evening is um, what do we do to support our students in their transition to the middle school after fifth grade? So the first thing I want to say is we will have the much longer, uh, we have a big trajectory, big run runway of time that we have your fifth graders with us. So we're not ready for them to consider going to the middle school quite yet. But I know that that's in the horizon for you all as you think through that, that through. So, so it is very strategic. We spend a lot of time in the spring um, having some transition planning um, for our kids. We have traditionally over the years had sixth grade teachers come to us and join morning meetings. We, um, we always have a visit with parents um, to the middle school. We always have a visit or two of for children to go to the middle school, have some dedicated time on that campus as well. So, um, so there is a lot of opportunity to get to know their new destination for sixth grade. Um, and we do a ton of planning. Uh, all of the folks you heard from tonight are actively involved in conferring with the middle school um, teachers and other department heads about programming for your children. So uh, in planning for what their language teacher, language classes and math classes will look like for next year, there's a ton of collaboration that happens um, as we prepare your children to go on to middle school. Thanks, Sue. Thank you. Thank you to the entire fifth grade team um, and to Iram Glens and Sue. Um, it, it's been a wonderful evening. Even I learned something and I should really know pretty much everything by now. So thank you. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful evening and enjoy the great weather. And we look forward to seeing you soon in person. Take care. Thank Bye -bye. you all.